James chapter 2. We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in rightly dividing verses to the right group of people and the right time period. If you don't do that, then you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. So that's what dispensationalism is. You got to make sure that the verse applies to the right time, peop uh, the right time period and the right group of people. If you don't do that, then it's going to mess up. So we're going to look at several doctrinal errors throughout churches, and then we're going to see how dispensationalism can easily answer them all. So we're going to first look at James chapter 2, James chapter 2, verse 24. The Bible says, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. So this verse seems to show that there are faith and works involved for salvation. However, the Bible says that it's not faith and works for salvation for Christians. For Christians, we believe that we are saved by grace alone grace. without works. Yeah. However, there are uh, churches that teach doctrinal errors that there is a combination of faith and works involved. Now, how we dismantle that is through dispensationalism. What you're going to find out most of the time to answer the error is that you got to look at these group of people. They are called Jews. There's a difference between Jews and the church. Now, obviously, if I were to ask you a question, if you're a Jew or if you're a church, what are you going to answer? You're the church, right? Yeah, that's pretty obvious. You're the church. You're not a Jew. Now, how many churches teach this? Faith and works for salvation. This one is Jew. Look at the book of James chapter 1. We will read verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. So notice right here there are twelve tribes of Israel that they address to. We're also going to look at James chapter 5 and verse 3. James chapter 5 and verse 3. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heat treasure together for the last days. So notice right here that it is at a time period called the tribulation. So now we see right here that this faith and works for salvation is applied to Jews during the tribulation. We got the right group of people and the right time period now. So if there are churches that teach you can lose your salvation, if there are churches that teach that you have to do works that accompany faith, for your salvation, that it is not by faith alone. Then you point them out that it's going to be Jews at the tribulation. Here's another doctrinal error where they take from Jews. It's water baptism. Go to Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. You'll notice right here that Peter told them that they had to be baptized to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what you're going to find out once more, who do you think it's going to be applied to again? Mm -hmm. Jews. It's going to be Jews again. Yeah. So remember, if you know this method of distinguishing Jews and church, it's going to be very helpful to you to avoid a lot of doctrinal errors. We're going to look at Acts chapter 2, and we will read verse 38. There are many churches who teach this for salvation today. The Bible says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So notice right here, it seems to show water baptism for salvation. But look, look at the verse 36. Therefore let who? All the house of Israel know assuredly. Also look at verse 39, the very next part. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off. So look at this. The promise is to those Jews and to their children and to the scattered Jews. You look at verse 36. Let all the house of Israel. Again, Jews. We see that over and over again. Here's another thing. We're going to look at Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. How many churches not only teach water baptism for salvation, but they teach that they will go through the tribulation. They believe that the Christian church will go through the tribulation. You understand this, is that that's a Catholic teaching. That's Seventh-day Adventist teaching. 
that is Jehovah Witness teaching. All of them, nearly all cults and religions, teach you have to go through the tribulation. The only people who don't are King James only dispensational Bible believers. See, so you see already a mess of doctrines already so far just by pointing out some verses. Who do you think this is going to be applied to again? Jews. See, this easy distinguishing is going to solve a lot of problems. Look at Daniel chapter 9. Oh, is this a tribulation for the Jew? Yeah. This is the only verse, the only verse in your entire Bible about seven years of tribulation. The only verse where you can find seven years of tribulation. Daniel 9, 27. And he, that's the Antichrist, shall confirm the covenant with many. The Antichrist will make a covenant with the Jews for one week. That's where preachers get their idea of a seven-year tribulation. One biblical day representing one biblical year. So thus, seven years of tribulation. In the midst of the week, he shall cause a sacrifice. Sacrifice during the days of Daniel? That's Jewish. And the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate even until the consummation. So notice right here, the Antichrist, he ruins the Jewish sacrifices. But this is proven when you look at verse 24. Verse 24. So this is the one week, remember, that seven years of tribulation. Okay, one week, which is seven years of tribulation. That's the only verse in the Bible where we get that idea. This one week is part of Daniel's 70 weeks. So this one week here is just one of the weeks from the 70 weeks. Okay? So then who are these 70 weeks, which includes this one, who are these 70 weeks applied to? Look at verse 24. 70 weeks are determined, see, made appointed upon who? Thy people and upon thy holy city. Speaking to Daniel. Daniel's people, Daniel's holy city. Christians don't believe we have our own holy city unless you're the Roman Catholic Church. Whose holy city during the days of Daniel? It's Jews again. So we see right here, tribulation is Jews once more. So it is reserved and appointed for Jews, not for Christians. Okay, another one. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. We see right here that God gave a command about observing the Sabbath. Observing the Sabbath. And then you'll also notice that throughout the rest of the book of Exodus, he is applying it toward uh, the Jews concerning the dietary laws as well. You're going to find that out real quick, that there are dietary laws involved as well. So throughout the book of Exodus, we see Sabbath and dietary laws. You see how many Seventh-day Adventist churches, including Christian churches, they get messed up in doctrine, and they feel like you have to observe the Sabbath. You have to observe certain dietary laws. Well, the thing is, is that we all know this is from the book of Exodus, right? Exodus gives all those instructions. But you're going to soon find out Exodus applies to who? Jews again. Let's look at Exodus chapter 20. Here's your famous verse for the Sabbath, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Verse 10, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates, etc. But who is this applied to? Again, you're going to look at verse 1. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have, what? Brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of of the house of bondage. He is speaking, again, that's not us. Were we enslaved in Egypt for those many years? No. Who was, though? Jews. So we see right here in Exodus chapter 20 that the Sabbath dietary laws would be for Jews. Here's another one you see right here. Another one you see right here is 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to look at healings now. Healings. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Is the drawing outside of the board, brother? If you could, yeah, if you could, where I'm writing, everywhere, it will be shown? Okay. 
Okay then, just making sure. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and we will read verse 22. How many churches, and I mean Christian churches, believe that certain people can do healings, like your pastor can heal you? How many of them believe that you can do actual signs and wonders? How many of them believe that you can see visions, speaking in tongues, etc.? All of these are signs, you got to understand. All of these are sign gifts. Now, all of these sign gifts, you're going to soon find out that they are applied to who again? Who do you think? Jews. It's going to be once more the Jewish people. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 22. The Bible says, for the Jews require a what? Sign. sign. So notice right here that the signs of I need to see something to actually happen. So I need visions. I need to speak in tongues, healings, outward evidences. All these signs are referred to Jews again. Now count the number of churches around the world. How many of them messed up in doctrine after that? So you see, that's why dispensationalism is so important to find out the right doctrine. If you don't do that, you're going to get messed up in all kinds of wrong doctrine. 